Um, so I wanted to catch up with you because you're playing in a whole lot of spaces throughout the regenerative renaissance. You've got a lot of perspective. And I'd love for, how, for you to unpack a lot of that. Uh, a big reason why is we've been in a winter season, as you know, for the last probably year or so. Winter being that time we're kind of reconfiguring the DNA, learning from everything we did before and getting ready for spring, which is when we kind of start growing and letting more people in. So a lot of people have been showing up into the space. Um, hence why I'm making these video series and helping them navigate all of this complexity and find out where they can best show up and start playing and moving the renaissance forward. Um, so that's kind of the overview. I would love to have you just kind of riff on the various, various areas that you've been playing and some of the wisdom you see and just kind of let you go and then we'll have a nice conversation. How's it sound? That sounds great. Um, uh, there is a lot going on, definitely. and. Uh, the going through the winter phase did kind of seem like, holy smoke. So, you know, like, why is this going this way? You know, but there, there, it feels like there is actually this new emergence uh, and, you know, springtime. Um, so it does feel like a, a lot of the attractors and a lot of the, the connectivity is beginning to emerge. And, you know, I am totally ready. Um, so I definitely see that. I've been uh, obviously spending a lot of time in the creating and being part of uh, uh, bringing into focus the Seeds Collaboratory. I've been spending a lot of time in my uh, role in Haifa, and it's very exciting there as we imagine what is a, a more rational tokenomics design that fits into that network. Uh, that also ties into what's a more rational tokenomics design that fits towards purpose in, in Seeds. Um, there's a lot to learn always. And um, uh, also, I feel like uh, some of the financial accounting sides of things that have been a little bit, um, you know, uh, recorded on the blockchain, but not necessarily visible and presented, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that by tagging and, 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 and noticing and, and gathering that knowledge from that, that financial stuff through, uh, you know, traditional accounting statements, other kinds of things, we've always imagined that in the uh, seeds ecosystem, that there's this huge amount of information to harvest from watching the circular economic flow. But that doesn't happen just because it's on the blockchain. It happens because people say, I want to observe and I want to build tools to make that information useful. Um, so even in the simple case of a DAO saying, you know, hey, we got, you know, value coming in, we got value going out, you know, what what happened over the last 12 months? You know, let's have a, a little report about that. We want to make all those things uh, more automated. And so I've been taking a uh, real interest in that. I love that. That's a nice segue, because I think that's one of the main reasons seeds went into a winter season is because the promise of value in, value out, I mean, people get to show up to seeds, contribute to the movement and get recognized for that, wasn't necessarily working. Um, there are some people taking a bunch of seeds, saying they're going to do stuff and not doing those things that was smaller. And there's other people doing a ton of work and not getting any seeds for it. So we saw that kind of extreme disparity on both sides. And we said, hey, maybe the tokenomics isn't quite there. Uh, one of the reasons, at least I thought that that was off, was that we needed more DAOs. We needed more containers that were controlling seeds and holding roles and recognizing how people were showing up. We also had the gratitude experiment start happening, which I think will start amping up because I think that's been a huge success, um, in my opinion, because that's able to recognize how people are showing up in a bunch of different ways. Uh, so I think that was one of the main reasons for entering the winter season was to get that ready so that when people did show back up, it was more equitable. They could contribute, they could get recognized for that and have spaces to play. So I think that's a nice segue to move into. What do you see merging there? You said you're seeing the seeds collaboratory Maybe you can give a, I mean, I need an update on this stuff too. So this is, cool. you know, cool. this so, is just um, um, I'd liked what you said, um, you know, like looking at saying what was not achieving our purpose, you know, and you actually, you know, zeroed in on an example saying, well, was the economic value flow equitable? You know, like how do you decide, you know, and, and, you know, how, what agreements uh, can guide that decision process? And then how do you uh, kind of observe and uh, monitor that over time? That, that's one element, of course. And it's difficult at any given moment to say, um, oh, look, this value exchange was, was accurate. You know, um, I kind of always think that, you know, you, you kind of squint your eyes a bit and you're like, this person got, you know, this many seeds. And you'd like say like, well, what did they do? They were gaming the system or were they not gaming or, or were they just part of the whole experiment? And it's 
great that the, that seeds are in all these different places. You know, I can't really know the answer to that. And and I and I and I and and so I, I'm 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 more okay with that. My yeah. bias would go to that too. I mean, there's seeds. Some will sprout. Some won't. You just toss some of them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but the thing is, is that there's another element of uh, of it that didn't quite work. Also, um, and and. And not not to judge it as as being you know that it was ineffective. It was that you know it wasn't really fully good yet at really establishing circular economies. You know, like I want to sell these tomatoes, and I love getting seeds. Well, how many? You know, it's like we we didn't really figure out how to communicate that, or or even what the feel of that was, and we actually gave some conflicting messages. So we said conflicting messages like, you know, hey, build circular economies, figure it out. You know, everybody just figure it out, you know, and 10 cents for a tomato, or 10 seeds for a tomato, whatever. Just start circulating. But but that was in conflict with the other message that said, you know, seeds actually have a value right now. And we're going to look at it and say, you know, it's about five cents right now. But we think it's going to be a lot higher in the not too distant future, maybe 10 cents or a dollar. And so that message kind of says to the person, keep the seeds. And that's in direct uh, competition with the other message, which said, use the seeds to buy tomato. Um, and so those things, need we need to kind of rationalize them. And then there, there's also the idea of like, I said I was going to build a community garden and feed you know, 100 people in, in my village. Um, did it work out? No. <laughs> yeah, what, what, that, that kind of like, you know, con, uh, you know that that learning and that sharing of the telling the stories of what happened. You know, people love to know what happened, and we didn't really build a framework for that, a container for that to happen. Uh, governance is also a little weird. You know, you know these people that self-identified uh, as citizens by jumping through a couple little, uh, you know, test hoops. You know, they were they got a citizen, uh, uh, you know, name on them, and they had nice little numbers on the the passport. But we didn't really have like a, a guiding principle for how they were showing up and why they were uh, uh, asking for the citizen badge and what responsibilities and what were they taking in as why this was. It was like, you know, hey, there's a game over here and I can get like a, 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 you know, a super great sword and an avatar and, a, and, a, and a, you know, a dragon to fly with me. Yeah, I want that. Why? I don't know. And and in the seeds game it was like, yeah, you can have a citizen pad. <laughs> well, I want that. <laughs> what does it mean? I don't know. <laughs> so so a lot of it was um, the stage was being set for an amazing attractor, an amazing magnet of emergence. And guess what? Thousands of people have arrived. Thousands of people heard it. I don't know how. And ten thousand people, you know, like signed up for accounts and and had seeds accounts and began to explore with each other. And then it kind of like you know began to like, well, what? Why are we here? And that's where kind of the organizational questions came in. And like, how do we structure this so they can really thrive? So it can really grow. There's so many analogies out at the farm. So many analogies. I'll give you one, just tiny one. All right. You want to plant, uh, let's say, lettuce. Or how about carrots? All right, you got two choices. One, you can say, during the life of this carrot, it wants to have a, a two-inch square around it. You know, And so I'm going to take a lot of time and make sure I plant those seeds two inches apart. And then they're going to have the nutrients and then the, the freedom to, to grow and be all that they are. Or you can say, you know what? I'm kind of you know busy and in a rush right now. I'm just going to go like this and put down a bunch of carrot seeds and there might be like a hundred carrot seeds in a foot over here and 200 in that foot and they're kind of in a line but they're not really in a line and you say you know like hey they know what they're going to do and when they're coming up you know they'll self select and maybe we're going to have to come in and thin them out but at the end of the day they're going to be fine you know how much time do you spend up front in curating the space where the where this is emerging? And how much do you just want to like let it go and see what it kind of explores? So we're now spending lots of time pulling out, you know, like we're thinning out the arugula, we're thinning out the carrots, we're thinning out the all the stuff in the farm, and it's gorgeous. But would it have it been a lot easier if we had just spaced the seeds a little wider apart when we started? Yeah, you know, so that's a question from the farm. Yeah, uh, mine gardening is I definitely put all the seeds in one hand, all the ones I want, 
all 150 <laughs> different types, and I throw them across the area. I give well, them the best of so I was like, what is this? So, <laughs> yep. You know, it's probably out there. Your um, voice has gotten quiet. Yeah, this mic is a little bit strange. Okay, now I can hear you good. How about now? Yeah, you sound great. Okay. Um, All right, so you want me to go further on like what's happening in the Seeds Laboratory or where do you want to go next? Sure, um, because the Seeds Laboratory is an effort to create a more structured space for people to show up, have roles, and create that structure we were just talking about, right? Your um, microphone so yeah. just went in and out, but it's good again. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, yes, please keep going. All righty. So let's kind of like contemplate and imagine the Seeds Collaboratory. And I'm going to share my screen just so we have a couple of uh, images that uh, always kind of fun to have some images. I'll make it a little bigger here. All right. Can I share my screen? Yeah, there we go. All right, so um, many of uh, the people that are going to watch this video, and you have seen this image here. And so this image, it has some amazing stuff in it. So this um, dotted big circle here is called the Seeds Collaboratory DAO. And this uh, is an example of another DAO, an adjacent DAO, and it's got the title Seed Support DAO. And here's another adjacent DAO. It's called the Bioregional Seeds Community DAO. And so DAOs exist in, in, in an ecosystem of relationships with other DAOs. But over the last year or so, some uh, really interesting ideas have come in that, that you know, I wasn't part of bringing them in. But boy, when they showed up, I said, I think that's really cool. So the DAO now has a more structure in it where there's this slightly inner light green circle here, which is called the nucleus. And inside the nucleus is the space where humans arrive with the intention to be action oriented and project uh, task oriented. They intend to serve the operational role of the purpose of this DAO. As, uh, uh, we've, as a lot of different DAOs have been experimenting and they're going through the DAO canvas of the 12 uh, topic areas in DAO activation, um, which I could pull up on the screen, but let's stay focused. Um, the DAO speaks to this operational agreements, the commitments that the people inside this circle are making each, with each other towards purpose, towards structure, towards strategy, towards these elements that if the group of people that arrive inside this nucleus have these shared agreements with each other, then it may wind up being fabulous and decentralized and really effective. And the structure of these circles helps organize it. And in this case, when uh, the, the people in the, that were creating the Seeds Laboratory began to think about it, they decided not to say, we're going to have three circles, and we're going to have three things called councils. And we're not going to get into exactly why a council is different than a circle, but again, they're structures where humans will live. And the humans will cross between these and be in multiple, and they, they have flow and information flow and, and, not, and all kinds of stuff between these. But it's an organizational structure. How many people can be inside this nucleus? Well, this nucleus has to be uh, uh, effective. It has to be a trusted space based upon uh, uh, mutual understanding and, uh, and uh, compassion. It has to be a place where people are humans and know each other. So if you put a thousand people in here, you're not going to know everybody. And that's not really what a nucleus is about. Um, uh, right now inside the Seeds Collaboratory, they said there should be no more than 144 people in there. You know, I like 144, it's 12 times 12, and 12 is really nice because it's four times three. So, you know, 144 feels like a good number. Uh, uh, I've heard people in uh, Hyphen and others speak about the Dunbar number, meaning 150 people can have a deep trusting relationship with each other. But when you go kind of past that, things begin to not work. So this is great. The nucleus is going to be 144 people. Fabulous. But the seeds ecosystem might be millions of people. You know, they, they're going to feel left out. Will they? Will they not? How do you how do you how do they do things? And what does it mean to be participatory citizen governed? If you got 144 people in the middle that have been given the authority to implement to to, to make sure that, that the health of the ecosystem is going well. And so the donut came into existence. This bigger green donut is the community space. And the people that are arriving and uh, here they are over here. They just learned about seeds and they know how to buy seeds and, and go to the farmer's market and all this stuff. They're out here in, in the whole world. 
But from time to time, they say, you know what? I want to come into the donut space here uh, because I want to participate. I want my voice heard. I want to be part of governance. I want to understand. I want to be part of the journey. So there has to be an onboarding journey to welcome somebody into this uh, space so that they know how they arrive. They know what's expected of them. They know how their unique gifts can be valued by the whole and, and how to contribute those gifts. And so this is called the Seeds Community. We just call it the donut. And you figure every citizen will be in there. Uh, and then you have to figure out how they vote, what, what do they vote on, and that kind of stuff. And that's called the donut. And maybe this donut will, in fact, have a million people in it. And through using something like the upvote election process, it'll, it'll participatorily you know, sense make and, and make decisions on uh, behalf. A quick side on the upvote process. Yeah. Can you explain that because I don't think many. Oh, oh OK. So um, the Eden it's voting it's process. Literally everyone, because you can involve a million people. And it's a good yeah, rhythm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's say you have a million people, and you want to collectively learn from them what they think is a, a decision. And maybe just for simplicity, it's going to be you know A versus B. Uh, you know, uh, we got two choices here, either A or B. In the in the United States, you know, we have Republican parties and this party and that party and Democrat, and we have a process by which decisions are made. It's just not particularly participatory, and it's no reasonable way of thinking is it going to be effective you know so um and a majority of people don't participate now because and, a majority, they, and they, they don't participate it. so right. the idea here is is that if you start with a very large community maybe you can start at the ground level and you can aggregate them into small little sets where they learn to uh, who each other are they meet each other maybe they're meeting each other for the first time um and it's kind of a randomized thing but but people are gathering initially in small little groups where they can share their uh, their hearts their understanding their questions and then they say all right we kind of understand each other a little bit and would like this one person among our set of five or ten or whatever would you take what we've learned together and what we as a group of five or seven really feel? And would you advance what we have learned together to the next round? And in the next round, they would randomly take all of those people that advance and are taking with them that, that, that knowledge, that agreed to viewpoints, and they would mix them all up again. And then they would meet in groups of seven or whatever size. And then you do it again and again because it's exponential. You only have to go through like three or four rounds and a million people turns into, you know, the final little group of seven that is representing the knowledge, the wisdom that's coming through this whole thing to then make that final uh, decision. Yeah. So to ground this in this graphic you have here, you say the center is 144. So maybe we're using the upvote process to pick those 144 people. So what does that look like? Let's pretend we have 3 million people in seats. Mm -hmm. So then we can do it in groups of 12. We'll keep it all 12. That could be nice. I'm so going then, to pause just for one quick second just to make sure this phone call is not an emergency. So you were you were just uh, kind of asking what kinds of decisions might be made, and you actually used an example. Perhaps the decision of which 144 people is kind of the, an example of such a decision. Yeah, right. I mean, let's say we want to make it fully democratic to pick those people. So what it could look like is once a season, so every three months, all people can get together. So let's pretend we have 3 million people in the Seeds ecosystem, and how do we have all 3 million people's voice heard? Well, on that seasonal day, we all come together and then you get into a group of 12 people like you were just talking about. And then those 12 people pick one person to go on to the next group. And then this only needs to happen one, two, three, four times. <laughs> so four groups will then happen and then you pick that 144. So you can't have a democratic then process where literally all voices are heard. And what's nice here is that representative who goes to the next level, they're really supposed to represent the 12 people under them. And then the 12 people under them. So each person is then representing all of their constituents who they had to have a direct communication with on that day. They got to meet, they understand who they are, and now they're representing them in the circle. Yep. So this is what they're calling fractal democracy. And I think it's a beautiful way to be able to have all the community engage in who is you know, representing them and get to know each other and percolate up all the great ideas, et cetera. So it's a fantastic thing. Anyway, keep going. Yep. And, and that process, as fantastic as it is, will be unfamiliar initially. And so when you welcome somebody into this donut, part of that is not this anonymous 
thing, part of it is that is a welcoming process to invite them to imagine what this fractal democracy could be and, and get them engaged into saying, I want to participate. The word, the phrase participatory democracy is really quite powerful. People have a sense that they are not abandoned, but that their voice, their thoughts matter. They matter. So, so that's really kind of a cool thing. And so a DAO comes into existence and it's got, you know, the potential to define a nucleus, the potential to define a donut space. And this also is really cool. There's another image, I'm not going to bring it up right now, that talks about another space outside of the donut space, which is the impact measuring space. It's the, it's the space where the DAO probes into what it's accomplishing in the world and measures it. And so if a DAO is coming to, into existence, let's say a DAO says, we want to come into existence and our purpose is to clean up uh, to, uh, this beach. You know, that's why we're organizing. We're going to figure out everything. We're going to figure out who's going to arrive. We're going to figure out how to do it. We're going to have a nucleus that, that figures out you know, the action-oriented items and stuff. And if they don't have the ability to, in a really useful way, look and see if the beach is cleaner or not, then they really didn't achieve their purpose. And so the idea of these probes coming out at another layer around here, witnessing and measuring and validating the world, you know, that's kind of really hugely powerful as well. And so DAOs uh, can then measure it, validate it, uh, report it transparently on the blockchain, and even issue uh, tokens representing the impact that has happened. So there's a lot of potential, and these these ideas, you know, are really emerging very quickly right now, faster, faster, more and more clever ideas. So that's all coming from a combination of of the people that have been emerging in the seeds ecosystem, the people that are uh, that have been you know contributing in the hyphy ecosystem from all different aspects. So it's really exciting. But let's kind of stay focused and go a little bit further. So. What's happened so far in the Seeds Collaboratory? Well, guess what? There actually is a Seeds Collaboratory now. So we can come here and go to the home. Let's see, press the button here. So welcome to the Seeds Collaboratory. And it is just birthing. It is just beginning. And the Seeds Collaboratory, if we click over here, uh, click over into members, we can see that at this very moment, there uh, are nine members of the Seeds Collaboratory. And these are the nine faces. These are the nine human beings. I want to point that are... out that this is a blockchain high technology project, and there's actually more women than men. So I'm, I just noticed that right now. So anyway. How uh, cool is that? that? Look at that. <laughs> so, um, so here we have uh, the nine people. So how did we get here? I mean, the seeds ecosystem began, you know, uh, a few years ago, and it and it went through various kinds of experiments and stuff. How did we get to now that we have a seeds collaboratory DAO recorded blockchain on the uh, transparently with this nine people? Well, we had to make some agreements to start, and it's called the bootstrap. How did we get going? And so we can click over here, and we can come down here, and we can click, and we can see. Let's see everything that happened up until now. So here is the very first thing that happened. And we can look at it just because just, uh, it's short. The Seeds Collaboratory DAO has just been created and it was set up to have three initial members. It was Alexandra, Danny, and me. Prior to enrolling in any additional members, we will be creating a series of proposals to set the base foundation for the DAO. For efficiency and alignment, we'll be temporarily using the following governance because everything that happens in the DAO has to be proposed, discussed, and voted on. And so we said, this is how we're going to do it. You need 100% quorum. All three people have to vote. They all have to vote the same way or else it's not going to pass. So we've made this commitment as a, as a triple, as these three people made a commitment, proposals were only going to be passed if everybody agrees. And we only have 24 hours to do it. So you talk about it for a while until you're in full alignment. You and post up the proposal. Setting, also, this might be a good way for any DAO to get started, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to figure out that. I, I love the line from Hadun, the, the, the beginning is a delicate time, you know, and, and that may not be the exact quote. Um, so anyway, we said we want this stuff to go pretty fast. So let's be able to make votes in, in 24 hours. And, you know, and Danny's like, well, what if I'm traveling, you know? <laughs> so you, you got to figure this stuff out. I actually, I had originally done it, I think, at like six hours or something. <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, this, so we agreed to this. 
first proposal, it got voted on, and now it's visible. It's transparent. You know what's coming. And so um, once we're finished with the proposals during the bootstrap phase, we will prepare and vote on subsequent proposal to update this configuration. So this is all we have at, at step one is that. And so if I go back over here, we can just look at what did we do next? We created an agreement about our purpose. What's the purpose of the DAO? We, and we, we very clearly labeled it Horizon 1. It's what we can see so far. And it's version 0.1. It's like the beginning of what we can see so far. So people wouldn't get so attached to like, what word? Did you, did you really think it all the way through? No. We thought it through only for what's necessary right now. And so uh, we put together the canvas for the purpose, the membership, and the structure. And we said, you know what? If we get these three done, that sets at least, and this is out of the DAO activation roadmap uh, uh, process that Haifa is, is suggesting is useful, there's 12 categories. And so we did these first three, we thought that that set the goal so that then we could do this one. And this one's titled Enrolling Next Members and Updated Voting. And so this one we'll take a look at. The initial three members will vote. Can we go, go back to that real quick? I just want to ground it. Yep. So before you brought in new members, you wanted to make sure the purpose was clear, what it meant to be a member was clear, and what they were actually joining was clear. Correct. And so okay. like, uh, we'll just look at it really fast. You the purpose- I just wanted to yeah. make sure that that was there before yeah. bringing in new folks. We made the purpose pretty darn short. It's just four bullet points, you know? Um, uh, and the same for each of these, because it, it can be short and focused right. uh, for only what you need right now. Um, and so we define purpose, we define membership, we define structure. And structure actually defined, remember in that other picture, we had three councils and three circles. Here they are. We said we are going to define these three councils and three circles and give a short description, not a 10-page you know, you know, story about what this is going to do, uh, just a short description that meets our needs right now. So we felt like if we had the first, these three done, then we would be ready to bring in new people. And so we then brought in the new people, and there were six of them. And uh, so the first one had two uh, women and me. This one had one, two, three, four women and two men. No, no, that's a, that's a man. So it was three and three for the next phase, all right? I don't remember us even talking about it, and that's kind of – we missed an opportunity to be real intentional about it. We just brought in people that we felt served the need at the time. Um, but, uh, you know, the universe made sure that we actually did it in a really good way. I like that. And then we said, all right, now we got nine people. Can nine people really agree on stuff? And can they do it fast? And what if somebody's traveling? And so we said, for efficiency and alignment, taking to, into account the increased number of members, we're going to modify the governance configurations as follows. We kept it at 24 hours, and we kept it at 100% unity. That's a pretty bold statement. We said there, we, that a proposal won't pass until anybody's concerns are figured out and, and, and uh, integrated in. That's a consensus. Uh, that was a, a very strong statement. But we acknowledge that we only needed 75% to vote because somebody might be traveling or something like that. And then we said, once we're finished with the next series, we'll prepare and vote on a subsequent proposal to once again update the configuration settings. And so with nine people, we then said, let's add a few more items. We said, let's decide how we're going to vote a little bit more. Let's talk about it, governance. Let's decide about how people are going to be rewarded for their, their work inside the nucleus. And let's decide what the strategy of operating the nucleus is. And I want to say something really important right now. Um, we're talking about how this tiny little circle in here operates. And there was a lot of tension during this discussion. Well, don't we have to figure out how all this operates out here now? Don't we have to say something about it right now? You know, and uh, we stayed very focused. Right now, we're just talking about how the group in here is going to work together. Everything else is part of version two, version three, you know, stay focused. And so we chose these three it's as important ones. We tried to do with seats the first time around is figure it all out. Up front. Yeah, yeah, figuring it all out's hard, <laughs> yeah. and and it requires a lot of changing. If you only figure out what you need, then maybe you don't need to change it so much, and then you layer on when you need it. And so um, we then went, and this is a really interesting thing from just kind of a, the idea of how DAOs come into existence. We said, all right, we did what we said of getting these three additional ones. Let's bring in new members. And you know what? We couldn't agree how to bring in new members, yet we forced ourselves with 100% uh, consensus to agree before we could do anything, and we got stalled. 
we got stuck. We got into uh, what's that called? The waiting place, you know, and Dr. Seuss, where we feel like we're supposed to do the next thing and bring in more people. And we just couldn't agree with the nine of us. And one of the sticking points that uh, eventually uh, it took a while to, to free up. One of the sticking points was, well, you know what? In the original seeds with the passport and everything that was done, there was this concept of citizen. And you can look on the light wall, you can look on the blockchain and see who are citizens and who aren't. Um, some of the people felt only citizens should be eligible to come into the nucleus during this beginning phase. And other people said, we want to bring people into this phase that are available, have skills and passion and want to serve right now. And who cares whether two years ago they became a citizen or they just did it last week. It's unrelated to what our current uh, focus is. And we realized we even though we, we had different phrases for it, that we hadn't come to an agreement as to what the bootstrap meant. And so it took a while. But finally, we came up with this proposal. Bootstrap Nucleus Participation Agreement. What does it mean to be in the nucleus? And we came up with uh, six, six points. And I'm just going to read them real fast. Uh, we can, people can read the stuff above later. Um, I will honor the collective agreements as defined by the approved proposals of the DAO. I understand that if I had a disagree with an established agreement, I am empowered to propose at any time to amend or rescind it. So if you're going to come into the nucleus, you know that you are agreeing to everything that's happened so far to come in. And then if you disagree or you want to amend it, you got the power to do it. Two, I agree to abide by the seed's constitution as it is now and as it evolves. If I'm not currently a seed citizen, I agree to proceed towards citizenship status. We intentionally left this reasonably vague. What does it mean to proceed towards citizenship status? It wasn't necessary to define it in here. Uh, three, I recognize the importance of DAO Zoom meetings for collaboration and sense making, and I will attend when available and review video recordings of missed meetings if possible. Again, somewhat vague, where some people wanted to say, you know, you need to attend every meeting or you need to attend this percentage. And it's like, we don't need to have that. That doesn't serve our goals here. Next one. I will regularly participate in asynchronous DAO work, maintaining transparency, including using Discord, creating and editing working documents and other activities that are beneficial to the purpose. Five, I'll make my best effort to inform myself and vote on each proposal placed on the DAO. And last, I will do my best to recognize the good intentions of every member of the DAO and to work with a positive and creative attitude towards resolving disagreements. And after a few weeks, of, of, of rewriting and sense making and, and, and kind of a, a negotiations and kind of like figuring it all out, nine people were able to agree on this. And we actually wound up just because of the timing, only seven were able to vote because uh, you only had a 24 hour window and people were traveling, but seven was enough. It was a good thing that we didn't need eight. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so this passed and that's kind of a pretty bold statement because now we know what it means and I'll show you uh, one other thing that came up, the Seeds Collaboratory DAO created a Seeds Collaboratory DAO Discord server. We have the Seeds Ecosystem Discord server. It's kind of loud. It's kind of noisy. It's kind of dis you know, chaotic and everything and stuff. And so we created one, and there was disagreement as to whether at what point in time we wanted to make it public and what that would look like. And so we actually, again, it took a little bit of time, but we actually came up with a proposal on our Discord server policy. One, the discussions on the server are transparent and visible to the Seeds community and the public at large. And two, the discussion on the service remain focused and in support of the collaboratory decision-making process. And then we came up with the rules. Anyone's able to join, everything's visible and all this stuff. So we, we are shifting from a private Discord server to a public Discord server. And there was a lot of disagreement as to are we ready? Should we have done it earlier and all this stuff? And since we couldn't figure it out, we had to say, well, we have to pause again until we figure this out collaboratively with 100% agreement. We got to take the time it takes because DAOs are complicated. Take the time it takes. Make the commitment to what we're doing. And this is on March 16th yesterday. So this is all like just happening right now. Totally brand new. It just got voted. And there, and here I'll show you, this is a pop. All right. So 
before you vote, you got to figure out what, what the policy is going to say. And so here is, for instance, a working document. This is totally a working document for the SEEDS Collaboratory as we collectively as a group work to uh, work to create the next policy that's going to go up, enrolling more members and updated voting. And so this is the draft. It's not been agreed to yet, but this is a draft. It says, by voting for this proposal, you indicate that you understand through direct conversation or indirect discussion that these applicants are qualified, have identified target areas of participation, circle and focus topics, referencing the structure proposal, and have indicated their acceptance of the nucleus participation agreement. And we gave links to those proposals. If passed, the following applicants will be enrolled as members of the nucleus of the DAO, but they'll be enrolled in uh, um, all together, all at once, not, you know. And so uh, through a series of, of sense makings and meetings and stuff, different people's names came up. And so like, here's a person, Alan, that we all love and know, he said, yes, I agree to the participation agreement, but he hasn't identified a circle council or a focus area yet. If we put this up for voting, then he, then because all three cells were not filled in yet, then we'll have to just take his name off and he can come in, you know, a week later, two weeks later, or whatever. People only come in if they're coming in to serve a purpose and with a focus area. So, for instance, uh, nobody, I don't know if you even knew all this stuff yet, because, but your name is here. And if you would like to come in during this wave, then you would assert, you would self-identify the circles and councils on which you'd like to serve. You'd self-identify the focus area where you would like to uh, uh, put your attention and you would affirm that you agree to the participation agreement. And then this kind of text will be in the agreement. We went one step further and we said, you know what? The nine of us that are already in here, we didn't go through this. We didn't agree to the participation agreement for ourselves. We voted a participation agreement, but we didn't agree it for ourselves. So we wrote down the name of the nine and we said what it is, what the circles we intend to contribute to. People haven't finished filling this out yet. And Analyst is traveling, so she hasn't been able to affirm this. But we put the note. It was affirmed in Discord you know, and, and so forth. So, um, so this is almost ready for proposal. And now, but for efficiency and alignment, taking into account the increased number of members, we're going to modify the governance. And this is the current draft proposal, although there's been a lot of discussion. 80%, um, 40% in three days. My guess is, is that it's probably going to come in at 90%, 60% in three days. Um, and so this is just a, a snapshot draft right now. We haven't made that agreement. But if you're going to have 10, 20 members and you if require 100%, and you require a high quorum, then everybody has to know and agree to that. And you have to uh, make sure that you have to then make the commitment to each other for what might be long processes before a proposal can happen successfully. And so I don't know what this is going to eventually turn into. Uh, uh, I kind of like 80-43, but it could be 90-60-3, uh, and that's fine too. Wow. Uh, we have about a minute left in this recording. So okay. uh, how could other people get involved? And ah, what well, let me let me show you that. Who's watching this should know. So, if you go to the Seeds Collaboratory uh, uh, DAO, if you go, um, oops, I'm in the wrong place here. You just go to the homepage here, dao.hyphen.earth.seedscollaboratory. If you come here, then you will be uh, uh, here, and you can click on the Members tab here. When you click on the Members tab, there'll be a button that says Become a Member. So, for instance, like if I go uh, to a DAO that I'm not a member of, like the Mom DAO. And I okay. click on here, then I see there's a become a member link. So if you want to participate, click on the become a member link, and then uh, it will be part of the process. Uh, come and join the Discord server once it's public and that kind of stuff. Wow. Um, anything else you'd like to share? This is yeah, beautiful. I love the progress, and uh, this is exciting. Um, and and I'll, I'll show you right here. A lot of people are coming and asking to apply. A lot of people, some that we know and some that we don't know, are, are showing up and they're pressing the button. I want to be part of this. I, I, you know, there's, I think there's about 35 uh, people that have pressed the button that they would like to join. And in this next wave, you know, uh, you know, some of them are going to be joining, and then maybe there'll be another wave of joining, you know, two weeks 